Hi guys, I'm Annie and welcome to today's podcast. Our special guest is Silje Dakiv, who's a Google Developer Expert. He loves JavaScript and he's been a JavaScript developer for over seven years. He also runs his own company, but he's going to tell us more about this. So, Ilya, hi. Will you tell us something more about yourself? Hello, and it's a pleasure being in the podcast. I'm really happy. Uh, what can I say? Well, as you all heard, my name is Ilya Dakiev. I'm born here in Sofia, Bulgaria. And uh, as you already heard, I'm a co-founder of this small company called Hill Grant. Uh, pretty much we develop web applications, mostly in JavaScript. Um, our projects are pretty nice, like pretty big, complex. So we solve a lot of interesting yeah. <laughs> issues every day. Um, as already mentioned, I became a Google developer expert, uh, what, like maybe half a year ago or something. I don't know. I, I can't remember. Uh, I'm actually a GDE in Angular and web technologies. Um, I also teach in Sofia university and I like to organize and participate in different JavaScript related events. And what else? Uh, recently, me and my teammates uh, started this YouTube channel called Commit.js, and uh, pretty much really? we, yeah, we, we uh, record live um, live streams. Just, uh, just I don't know, doing <laughs> stuff with JavaScript. Yeah. I mean, a little so bit more complex our, stuff. Our listeners can can check it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. if they're interested, we we're like uh, searching for like to, to reach as many people as we can. Uh, but uh, yeah. our episodes are not like at least not yet related to, for example, a certain framework or something that they might uh, find useful for their daily job. We're just like playing around still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I'm curious to know what inspired you to become a developer. So how did it all start? Oh, that was uh, quite a journey. <laughs> so for everyone, my, it's quite a journey. Yeah. Well, my experience, like as a developer, started from my university, Sofia University. Uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, started. Uh, I, I started. Uh, I started the university. My major was uh, informatics, which is uh, probably mm -hmm. going to sound strange for people who are watching uh, internationally. Yeah, it's like because, computer science. Uh, yeah, but it's it's it is computer science, yes. Um, yeah. And in university, the fir the first few, two years, you study a lot of mathematics, so you don't have. Uh, I mean, you you study, uh, of course, programming, but we we were studying uh, C plus mm plus. -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like very um, rough uh, topic. It's, it's not like fun as JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah, so there's much theory. Yeah, but it is uh, it is something that it's very uh, useful and it's something that everybody should uh, go through because it yeah. gives you a lot of knowledge about object oriented programming and stuff. So it's definitely a must <laughs> if you want to be a I, at least I think so if you want to be a good developer. Um, yeah, and I actually, I it so yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and then yeah. actually, uh, what, like, what, what I, I, I'm trying to figure out which, which, uh, year it was when, when I actually started thinking that, wow, I can actually create something. Probably it was like the mm -hmm. third year of my university or the second one. I, I can't remember, but I started working mm -hmm. for this, um, small company. We were developing this, uh, really interesting project for, uh, the market in the United States. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, well, it was really interesting, but sadly it didn't work out. I, I, I don't know why. I think that just, the. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. I cannot say uh, if the people who, are, okay, who I worked with before are listening. It was really cool. Sadly, <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, we were using uh, back then. I was uh, working with .NET, and I wasn't like a big fan of C Sharp mm -hmm. and Java. So I don't know. That was like yeah. what seven years ago. I, I, I can't. Um, I, I I can't remember. I mean. I, everything feels like it was yesterday to me, yeah. but I it's guess it was uh, yeah, it, it was a long time ago. Yeah, we know. 
and um, I decided to start uh, start learning JavaScript. Uh, and I applied to this course in Sofia University called Advanced JavaScript, the course that I'm actually teaching today. Which you are now teaching? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was That's really, amazing. yeah, it was really awesome. Like one of the best courses that I attended. I really learned a lot. And after I finished the course, they actually um, told, asked me if I want to actually be teaching. And I started uh, teaching. And from there on, I just quit my job and pretty much I opened uh, my company and yeah things started getting interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah do you think that this is a risk you know quitting your job and taking such a big step oh of course people, that's quite unimaginable unimaginable yeah of course it's a big risk but uh, you know like this is these are the um, things that actually uh, make you like they push you to go yeah. forward you know yeah uh, they make you feel alive yeah because uh, yeah if you are like in your da daily just regular job sitting in in front of your computer you just know that yeah, nine, every five. yeah every day like every month you're getting paid and you're kind of like feeling very safe and at a certain point yeah. if if you if you don't have challenges you you become to get lazy you know so you're just very yeah, comfortable you're, with you're everything not, yeah you're not getting out of your comfort zone so exactly and you're not making any progress mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, exactly so this is something that it was really it was like a shock for me as well i at first mm -hmm. i didn't know what actually was going on and what to do and stuff like that but um, i don't know i just focused on the things that i really enjoyed doing and yeah. so I started, it out, so. mm, yeah, I started teaching more. I started giving like um, private courses for companies and stuff like that. So it was, mm -hmm. it was quite a experience and still is. <laughs> yeah. and, Some people yeah. say that the wisest way to learn something is to teach it. Do you agree? <sighs> You've been teaching for so many years. What have you learned from it? It is, uh, I cannot say that it's like when you, you definitely learn things much better if you start teaching, mm -hmm. but you don't, you, or at least you should not be learning it while you're actually teaching it to the people because you should know it before you start teaching better. it. Otherwise it's yeah. not, yeah. it's not good. But this is um, <laughs> like, it's a, there's a lot of pressure when you step in front of uh, other people, especially to, mm -hmm teach them stuff so you should be really prepared um, because um, otherwise they might, you might uh, forget something. sorry yeah. you might forget something because of, if you're nervous so yeah you might make a mistake yeah well there are like or at least i have but i'm i'm pretty sure that the other people do it there are like other uh, tactics that you can actually mm -hmm. escape if you uh, forget something uh, for example, what I do is because, um, you know, we are human. We always like forget something, yeah, even course. if it's something that you use every day. So what I do is yeah. basically I tell the students, OK, can someone tell me what we should do here? Yeah. Right. And yeah. they start thinking and I have more time to figure out what <laughs> I actually had to do. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. Yeah. otherwise you just start panicking and <laughs> things don't go well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get even more nervous and yeah, yeah. things get worse. But um, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to use that. So yeah, yeah. thanks for the advice. No problem. It's a pleasure. For, yeah. for me, like teaching is uh, it's really cool. I mean, just sharing mm -hmm. uh, your knowledge with people is something that really uh, makes you do better at what you do. And yeah. one other thing that it was super challenging for me was uh, to actually be live coding in front of people. And this, in, yeah. this is something that I mastered uh, in Sofia University yeah. as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's really cool. Okay, so we already mentioned that you're a Google developer expert. Um, can you tell us more about this? So what's this exactly and how did you manage to become Google Developer Expert. It sounds really challenging and really big for at least for me. I I suppose for our listeners listeners as well. So 
Ah, yeah. It, it, this is how it sounded to me before I became one as well. <laughs> um, and now? I don't know. Now I'm guess I'm ready for new new things. <laughs> but it's still something that I'm proud yeah, of, of course. The next challenge. So to be yeah. like a GDE, a Google Developer Expert, mm-hmm. is uh, pretty much yeah. to be like um, recognized by Google for the things that you do. Uh, for mm-hmm. certain like technologies, uh, so you can become mm-hmm. like good Google developer expert for I think most of the technologies that uh, Google is developing. For example, I'm as I said in Angular, but also in web technologies because as you know, Google is one of the companies that is pushing a lot into yeah, like developing new things for the web. Uh, so yeah, these are like certain things that you can become a Google developer expert for. For but um mm-hmm. I don't know how did i become like or I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what when i actually heard the first time about this uh thing mm-hmm. so like back in the days i actually was uh doing a lot of angular js and then mm-hmm. uh as you know angular js uh just <laughs> it got um, deprecated pretty much and we all had mm-hmm. to like deal with a new version of angular and just following a lot mm-hmm. of people who are who are very good at uh, angular most of them were like google developer experts so i i was like okay what do i have to do to become one and become one. i yeah. really wanted for a long time to become one so i actually was I, I was never doing things to just for just to become a Google developer expert. I was, for example, organizing events and teaching a lot of courses and um, just organizing interesting things just because I, it was really like good for me and for the people, for the community out here. And at a certain point when I started going to like conferences, um, for example, Angular Connect, I met with a lot of people uh, who were already GDEs and they were like, okay, why don't you try? I mean, you have a lot of background and stuff yeah. like that. So for me, it was... You were already prepared. Yeah, I, I, I really didn't feel prepared though because you had to, or you have still to go to several interviews and uh, mm-hmm. I was not sure what is going to happen on those interviews. Okay. So, yeah, but one day I just decided I'll try and... Yeah. Yeah, everything went pretty smooth. So, well, great. That's great for you. Are there? Do you know whether there are many Google Developer Experts? Uh, yeah. So if I'm one, you know, actually, if, if I want to become one, I just study the technology and I become one. I go to the interview. So. So first, the first thing that you. The, what's the process? The first thing. So. Yeah, the first question, are there a lot? There aren't so many. Actually, here in Bulgaria, it's uh, mm-hmm. only me and Stanimira. Uh, wow. Yeah, and well, at least, like, it's even two GDs for Bulgaria is pretty good, but there isn't, like, a limit of how many there can be, so yeah, it's of not course. a problem. Yeah, of course, of uh, course. But worldwide, I don't know, I have to check, actually. If you go to, the, if you go to Google and just type down Google Developer Experts, mm-hmm. you can see the whole directory of all the GDEs around yeah. the world. So I'm not sure how many are there now mm-hmm. because probably <laughs> constantly new people are getting at it. So. Yeah, of course. But um, we have so many people with, in Bulgaria and so many talented ones. So two of so many mm-hmm. isn't that, that much. So yeah. that's great. So the process is... Makes uh, you feel unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the process is um, you have to get recommended by another uh, Google developer expert Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to uh, send like all the pretty much all the backgrounds that you have, all the things that you uh, do, Uh, for example, like, like, well, it's not like a CV because it's more like a CV for the open source, let's say. Uh, because you mm-hmm. like send all the events that, for example, you organized or you went to talk on conferences mm-hmm. like meetups, um, open source projects, uh, just things that you contribute to and stuff like that. So for to mm-hmm. become a Google developer expert, you really have to be contributing for the community and to just you know, care about the community in your country or globally. Yeah, just writing mm-hmm. blog posts and stuff like that. So. 
you sh you have to collect all this information, like send it, for example, to another GD who is uh, able, who is willing to recommend you, and then after you get recommended, um, or rec uh, pretty much Google or some like person from Google sits down and kind of does a back background check on the things that you sent, yeah. and then they're like, what was it? two or three interviews i forgot actually i think that there were two the first interview are they, are they technical or? yeah well the first one is actually not technical it's um with another google developer experts just a random one that you don't know yeah. and um they ask questions about why do you want to become one what are the things that you think that will change if you become one mm -hmm. and stuff like that so pretty much they want yeah. to kind of understand you as a person and what you do mm -hmm. and the second one uh i think it, yeah i think that there were two i'm not sure but the second one is technical yes so you are like sitting down with a person from google actually and uh you know they're understanding if you know what <laughs> you say yeah. that you know pretty much yeah, yeah. so no point in line right um, uh, well, you know, like if you're teaching and you, when somebody comes and it shows you, for example, a project that you wanted him to develop, you can co immediately understand if he understands it or not. Yeah, if he knows. So yeah. it's pretty, okay. it's pretty easy. I think it's pretty easy to understand mm -hmm. if a person knows so or doesn't know. someone who yeah. knows, who understands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So. Yeah. I think this was the process. Okay. After that, you have like a few weeks for them to add you to the system and stuff like that. And then, yeah, you pretty much get access to uh, information that you don't uh, usually have access to. I mean, it's just like um, just new things that are coming to, for example, Chrome and just their technologies, what they're working on. You get added to mailing lists and mm -hmm. you become a part of this huge as we say, family of um, experts, okay, yeah. and you just have more connections. Yeah, you, so these are the benefits? Um, well, not only, of course, yeah. you can, for example, like um, if you want to participate on a conference and the conference doesn't have money, pretty much uh, you can like ask for money from Google and they pretty much pay you the expenses to, for example, attend this mm -hmm. conference. Uh, for example, for me last year, they uh, took part of the expenses for me to get to San Francisco on the Google Developer Expert wow. Summit. Yeah, uh, and there are a lot of there are a lot of benefits. Just the I think that the biggest benefit of uh, becoming a GD is that you just get recognized by Google, and like if people see that you're recognized, they look at you mm. in another with in yeah another way pretty much different eyes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you mentioned contributing to open source projects. Uh, what's your experience with this? Can you tell us something more? So, actually, before when I was... Um, uh, when I was, I was still in university, I, everybody was like talking about open source and stuff like that and contributing. And I was like, mm. that sounds really hard, you know. I'm not sure what i should do i'm not sure what it's a challenge yeah what, where i should be contributing to and stuff like that uh but actually it's not so hard um the if you sit down and start thinking okay how should i contribute probably it won't work very well so if you focus on like working uh, or developing just applications and you just start using some kind of like modules from github and stuff like that you at a certain mm -hmm. point start discovering some like issues for example with this module or just new features that might get added and if you have time you can just sit down and for example, fix the issues or just add the new features and just uh, make a pull request. And if you uh, get lucky and you followed all the rules, because for example, if you want to contribute to Angular, there are a lot of things that you need to do, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a lot uh, time, it's just time consuming. And you know, you can just become a contributor, which is uh, really cool. But uh, yeah. for me, like I, because I do a lot of things, I don't have a lot of time to 
be uh, sitting down and just uh, contributing to other projects because I have to sit down and study all the rules and then I have just it's just a lot of time as mm -hmm. I said it's time consuming mm -hmm. but what I open source these are just uh, a few like how should I say like libraries they're not so mm -hmm. big ones but these are like yeah. things that we uh, use in uh, most of our projects, things that I found and my team found very useful when developing uh, Angular projects. So I just sat down and I open sourced them. Uh, yeah. But of course, I we didn't charge anything our clients because of, after all, it's open of source. Course. So I just invested in my time just to just focus on this thing and try to mm -hmm. make it work for our products but never charge the clients <laughs> because <laughs> otherwise it, yeah. it won't be uh, very good for us <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to be curious and patient at the same time i guess yeah yeah and you you must have the time so yeah th okay. time is uh, time is the thing that it's uh, very limited it really depends yeah, on what especially you do, now but, yeah when you run a company well, what do you do in your free time? Uh, I don't have. That was a question for the for the end of the podcast. But what do you do in your free time? I don't have a lot of free time. <laughs> but yeah, but what do you? I'm do not in sure. The I'm not so sure. I'm not sure how to distinguish like my free time from my busy time. For me, it's like mm -hmm. just time, and I just invest. Yeah. I just invest. That's that's what okay. I do. It's either. How, how do you relax? How do you relax? Ah, uh, I really like walking like just mm -hmm. going somewhere very peaceful and beautiful and just walking or just traveling somewhere um or just i like, go work out or something so i can just um like make this pressure disappear Recharge. from yeah yeah exactly um uh, but i don't know what can I say? I mean, I really like to just uh, sit down and study new things and just uh, try to make, uh, like, mm -hmm. for example. Most of your free time. Uh, sorry? You want to make most of your free time. You don't yeah, yeah. Time. Yeah, because just the time for, in our lives is just limited. And uh, if you try mm -hmm. to do yeah, more great. things in the time that you have, then you'll just accomplish more things, right? So, yeah, but <laughs> you have to be careful not to, you know, get too tired. Yeah, well, what can I there, say? There's something called like a burnout. You have to be careful. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. But um, it really depends because um, it really depends how you feel about the things mm -hmm. that you do. For example, I really love the, the things that I do. I really love that. Uh, I, I really love everything that I'm doing. So I don't accept it for, for example, as a job. Uh, yeah. If I accept it as a job, then maybe I'll really be tired uh, because psychologically it's just going to be uh, another mm. another feeling but for me even like just sitting down and just uh, coding javascript is kind of sometimes relaxing and fun so well, yeah that's great so you made your hobby your your job yeah and i also basically. i also actually before i i went to university uh, since i was in school mm. i was uh, a dj and i still dj uh, wow. from time to time yeah I I still buy records and I play only vinyl, mm -hmm. so with turntables. Mm -hmm. So I still do this yeah. from time to time. That's why I uh, don't. Uh, I have problems hearing sometimes, <laughs> just because of the loud music <laughs> in the clubs. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. I'm with headphones now. So, so you're so, also a DJ. Yeah, yeah. You're a Google developer expert and a DJ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a great combination. Yeah, it it, okay. it is pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, okay, so we talked about commit JS. You mentioned it, mm -hmm. uh, and I think I it would be something interesting for our listeners, for me as well. Um, where can we find it on YouTube? Uh, it's just commit.js or Yeah, it is. Uh, I think, yeah, commit.js or just commit JS without the dots, uh, you find it. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of followers, so we cannot have a unique ID yet. I think that we need 10 more followers so we can reach 100, so we can create uh, our unique ID, which is going to be commit.js. 
but um yeah mm -hmm. if yeah, you go okay. on youtube you can find it i'm just not sure like i think that it's a little bit for i don't know maybe if people will find it just go watch the series because there are multiple mm -hmm. uh, series online now and if you find yeah. it interesting you can just uh i don't know follow you can us. Share it. yeah you can share it you can follow <laughs> you can us. tell your friends about it okay yeah but definitely uh, is there something for complete beginners sorry um, I just wanted to say that in the future we're going to be doing mm -hmm. other stuff because currently I I decided or we decided to just focus on creating our own uh, front end framework. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, this is what mm -hmm. we're currently doing. But in the future there are going to be other uh, episodes that are more, for example, Angular orient oriented or just some other framework or something that is yeah. JavaScripty. <laughs> yeah, are you are you doing it? with your friends or your teammates, yeah. colleagues, so the people that work in your company or... Yeah, with, with my this? teammates, it's pretty much... I'm, I'm doing all the coding for now. I'm waiting for them to mm -hmm. start uh, participating a little bit more. Uh, I mean, to mm -hmm. start live coding as well. But so they are uh, helping me a lot, uh, definitely. So it's, yeah, just, right. it's just us for now. But the idea is that everybody mm -hmm. who uh wants to like show something or just do a really interesting discussion about something mm -hmm. to join and just do it why not I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. everything that it's just interesting yeah okay so we talked so much so much about your company your teammates um what do you do so what are the projects that you're working on um what kind of clients do you have uh, mostly international. We don't. Uh, I mean, we we do work with uh, Bulgarian companies. Most of the things mm -hmm. that like I do for Bulgarian, they're not actually Bulgarian. They're located here in Sofia, uh, but they're mm -hmm. not even Bulgarian. But the things that I do mostly uh, for them, these are the private trainings. Um, everything that is JavaScript related. I mm -hmm. probably yeah. like. Now I have a break. I guess now everybody has a break just because of this uh, pandemic. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. they, like the last two or three years, uh, I pretty much did not stop teaching at all. So it's for me, it's like teaching all, yeah. all the time. <laughs> so, so you're constantly traveling or you're doing also online trainings? Uh, no, I not not so many online no no not online we we, we do it in their offices so it's just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah in-person trainings but uh, other our other clients uh, they're just like we have from France we have from like Germany actually one of the like largest projects that we're working on we don't have like this mm -hmm. is like the largest project we that we ever like developed and we're only doing the front mm -hmm. end uh, it's pretty much a um, uh, customer portal for monitoring and controlling uh, off-grid and hybrid-powered systems. These are like the big systems oh, that you that, can find. That sounds yeah. complex. Yeah, this this is these are the big systems that systems that you can see mm -hmm. in the fields with the windmills mm -hmm. and the uh, like sun mm -hmm. batteries and stuff like that. So it's pretty, it yeah, it's pretty interesting because you have to deal with a lot of charts, with a lot of data that is coming from controllers and stuff like that. So it's it's super challenging. It's just yeah. it's just that's why it's amazing. interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, definitely. So I'm really I'm really proud of uh, this project and how how we're yeah. handling it. Definitely the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, are you looking for new people by any time? Uh, for new people to join our team? Or, yeah. Well, currently, no. <laughs> Surprisingly, okay. everybody everybody's uh, like probably searching for people, but we aren't yeah, just because we're a small right. company and we don't have a lot of projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We mostly focus on, or at least I want to focus on not having like one million projects and having one million people. I really want to for us to have like a small team and to be like a quality team to be developing quality software yeah, quality over quantity yeah and uh, yeah exactly you said it so because yeah. i i i also worked before as a consultant for companies and i really see how the level is uh in mm -hmm. like here in sofia so i think that's yeah things can be better. <laughs> so that's why yeah. we try to do things better. 
Yeah. So you have seen what what's the reality, and you want to. Yeah, you know that this yeah. is one of the most interesting things. For example, when I'm doing like a training for another company uh, or just going there mm -hmm. to consult or just like contract is to see the people there, to like get to know them, to see how they're working as a team, to see what um, mm -hmm. practices they have as a team. And mm -hmm. it's super interesting. This is like one of my favorite everyone's things. Everyone's different, I guess. Yeah, everyone's different and like just, yeah, everyone's different. <laughs> yeah. So you do presentations in front of them, right? Um, Your trainings are like presentations or like I stopped, seminars? I actually stopped, uh, I mean, because when you say presentation, uh, I the first thing that pops in my head is just like slides, talk. yeah. But I don't I, yeah, I don't okay. use slides. I don't use any slides. What I do? At all? Yeah, no slides. I only wow. I'm only doing live okay. coding. So pretty much mm -hmm. I just sit down there, and I start showing them stuff while I'm just writing it mm -hmm. down. I or we like you're it, explaining to them. Yeah, I'm explaining mm -hmm. and I'm coding it so they can like get the feeling of how you use it and how, for example. Mm -hmm you configure it because with slides it's just, just very boring. I really hated when I yeah. went to university and slides, slides, slides. And after the fifth slide, yeah, I'm falling I asleep, right? Pain. Yeah. So live coding is a really good thing that we actually started doing it in the advanced JavaScript course in Sofia University. We had like a few years ago, we decided, okay, we won't have any slides. We're just going to be live coding. And it turned out mm. really well for the people. It was like, they, started understanding things better and it became more interesting yeah, for they're them. Seeing yeah. them. It's they're seeing yeah. uh, how it's how you write it and also how you think as a developer. While you're how, them. Yeah, for example, how you also forget, how you also make mistakes and how you yeah, later okay. find these mistakes and fix them. This is like yeah. a really important process and how, for example, you're debugging your code because uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that it, it was really surprising for me and for us as uh, teachers in Sofia University is that nobody is teaching yeah. the students how to debug their code. And you cannot yeah. always like um, hope <laughs> that your, pro your, your code is going to just yeah. work ri right away after you Mm -hmm. uh, typed it right so yeah. it the the process Maybe of thinking is really only important. perfect code so i cannot say <laughs> but yeah <laughs> uh this these are my presentations pretty much i just live code i push the code uh, mm -hmm. to github i give information like as um, mm -hmm. just comments on the code and yep that's that's all and like mo yeah. I, I don't know that there, there isn't like a single company that it's uh, not um, it, it's sad about what I uh, did. I mean, yeah. every everyone's happy mm -hmm. about the courses that yeah. I do. So I'm that makes me happy. That's great. Mm -hmm. So we have some questions that um, our listeners have sent to us actually. So they want to know some more about you, and uh, they have sent questions. Mm -hmm. So the first one is. Um, how and actually when did you realize that you have succeeded at what you do? Was there a specific moment when you just knew that, uh, okay, now I'm successful? <laughs> this is really interesting. I actually cannot say that yeah. I succeeded even now. At all? No, I cannot oh, say. Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel that uh, as I, I just do a lot of things and I do them and I do them and I'm like, okay, I don't feel like I'm successful in this thing, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think that it's never enough. Yeah, I think that this is how it is. Like until you just, <laughs> I don't want to say the word, but yeah. yeah, just go go away from this. Like, but um, for me, I think that the the other people, uh, it's their decision if I succeeded or not. It's not mine. Yeah. So that's an interesting point of view. Well, this is how I feel. I don't know. I cannot say that I succeeded. Yeah. Maybe succeeded in what? Like succeeded is like if it, if if I say succeeded, it should be in something. Yes, I succeeded. For example, becoming a Google Developer Expert. Google. But yeah. yeah I don't so know. these are like goals that you're set for yourself. 
yeah, I constantly set goals for myself. I just say, okay, this mm-hmm. year I'm going to accomplish this. Next year I'm going to accomplish that. And they're pretty realistic goals uh, because I mm-hmm. accomplish them. I succeed in accomplishing mm-hmm. them. So, yeah. So it's like, um, I remember I recently, I didn't read the book, but uh, I heard many interviews. Um, have you heard about the difference between a finite and an infinite mindset? So mm. Simon Sinek um, has been talking so much about it. He even has a book and he says that it's finite when you set yourself a goal and you reach it and you think, okay, this is enough. Well, whereas infinite is like the thing that you do. So this is, you just keep track of your progress by setting goals and you just keep pushing forward. And yeah, for me, become, you, you're you just becoming better. I'm just, what can I say? I'm just greedy. I, there's not there's nothing enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always... Yeah. Greedy in a nice way. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I always try to do as much as I can because, you know, uh, what, like when you think about it, what is uh, life and why are we here on mm-hmm. this planet and what are we doing here? I mean, after uh, after some time when we're not here, what it will matter is what we actually did and what we left behind. Yeah, so what, yeah. I, as, as much as I can, I'll just try to live as much as I can here on Earth before, you know, I just disappear. Twice well, yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah, I hope that people get inspired because my, I'm not sure whether most people think about themselves and not you know what will be left behind after they they disappear Mm -hmm. so they're just focusing on now and what i can do for myself now to you know i think that feel better or to have more money even have more power they're not they're not thinking long term i think that uh, like for a lot of people uh Mm -hmm. it including me back in the days uh, for it was not uh, I wasn't sure um, I didn't find what I like it was very hard to 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 find something that I really enjoy doing and to so before before programming yeah yeah before before Mm -hmm. programming or before like even back in school when I was like DJing and skateboarding all the time and snowboarding and stuff like that I just like I was like I, I didn't know what to do with my life so mm-hmm. I think that everybody should just find this thing that is he's really happy about it and is very enthusiastic as for example me uh, I found this for example in programming and in JavaScript not just the technology I'm not saying that uh, mm-hmm. JavaScript for example is something that uh, I will um, do for the rest of my life because as you know like technologies yeah. come and go so uh but the, just like programming in general sorry you might find something that's more interesting for you. yeah yeah so it's just a ma- matter of time but you people just need to find this thing that makes th- that they're passionate about and when they mm-hmm. find it it's it won't matter like um everything else won't yeah, matter so way, much yeah you should not be focusing on like, for example, oh, I want to get a lot of money. How should I get a lot of money? You should be focusing on, oh, what's making me passionate and to find something that is pa- that you're passionate mm-hmm. about. And this thing, you're going to start trying to become the best at it. And this will bring you everything else that you want. So yeah. at least this is how I feel. I'm inspired. <laughs> I don't know about our listeners, but I'm definitely inspired. Well, so... I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm happy as well. So, you're saying that everyone should find the thing that they're most passionate about, but how do you find it? I mean, are you constantly looking for new things until you find it, or you just, when you find something that makes you happy, you just stick with it? So, for instance, if someone's um, thinking about getting into programming because these days everyone wants to be a software engineer there are so many job opportunities um, you know the the salar- salaries are um, higher than in the other um, sectors so people know this and they're curious so will this make me happy will this bring me more money 
and they're constantly, you know, trying to figure out whether they, they should start, whether it's something that will be challenging or whether they will give up early. So if someone's thinking about it, what would you advise them? What advice would you give? So first thing, uh, if it's not challenging, then it's not worth it. That's how I think. Uh, because okay. you cannot like expect uh, for you to receive something easy and for this thing to be very, um, I don't know, very good for a long time or just uh, mm -hmm. like easy things, they come easy then go and they go easy, you know. So this is something that yeah. I really... How should I say? Like I had this period back in the days when I decided mm -hmm. when I decided that I'm going to become very strong. This is because I had a lot of time uh, when yeah. I was in my first, not like even before I went to university. So I decided, okay, I'm going mm -hmm. to be like working out a lot, and I made huge progress. Mm -hmm. For example, for two years, I didn't stop like working out, and I become super. Wow. I became super strong. That dedication. Yes, that's that's dedication. Yeah. So dedication is one mm -hmm. of the things that I think is very important for everyone. Like um, mm -hmm. when you start doing something, you should dedicate yourself, and you should not stop. Because there are going to be a lot of times like you, uh, that you're going, you're going to be off. Like, why am I doing this? I'm not so good at it. But you should never, mm -hmm. never quit. And you should be very dedicated. Mm -hmm. And this will uh, make you successful. At least this is how... How, this? how Sorry? Uh, sorry, keep on. Um, I, I just said... Yeah. going to remember my question. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this will make you successful. And one other thing that mm -hmm. I, I might... I, I just want to say, for, uh, as I said it before, mm -hmm. don't do it for the salaries. I really hate, for example, that, for example, young students in university, uh, they come and they're like, okay, uh, I come to teach programming because I'm going to have a nice salary. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds so boring. Come on. Do That's it. kind of popular right now. Yeah, well it is popular. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the things that it's um developing here in Bulgaria just because mm -hmm. we are working like most of the developers here are working for countries that are outside of Bulgaria and you know the companies are getting uh, p uh, paid well and the uh, developers okay. are getting paid well as well. So everything's good. But again, mm -hmm. like if you're good in, uh, for example, like a technology or some like framework, uh, you're going to even have like a better salary. So you should not, I don't know, you should yeah. not focus on the money because money is something that you get paid for, for what you do, right? Yeah. So if and you're if doing, you doing yeah, and if you're doing it really good, yeah. you're going to even get paid even more. So mm -hmm. this is why like I really like hate people nowadays because mm -hmm. they come to they come to you and they say okay how much are you going to pay me and then I say okay mm -hmm. so what can you do right yeah. this is like it, it's just like one to one connection you cannot expect to get mm -hmm. more money if you're not good at what you're doing right so mm -hmm. I don't know this is like the thing i completely agree i think that people should just focus on finding something that it, it is interesting for them otherwise they're mm -hmm. going to just start working somewhere and uh, this is going to be very how should I say not very they, they won't feel happy yeah it just, be, yeah it, even even with time i believe that they will end up hating their job because every day they do something that maybe they're not good at maybe doesn't make them happy, they don't love it, and, uh, you know, maybe in a half a year or a year, they'll end up hating it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, pretty much don't do it for the salaries, just do it for the thing. I mean, do it because it's cool, mm -hmm. do it because there are, like, cool mm -hmm. people who are doing such cool things. Just go on GitHub and look at the source code that people are writing and try to yeah. be like them. This is inspiring, for example, for me, because I really want to, I mean, 
I guess I am now writing quality JavaScript code, but there are always going yeah. to be like better things that I can do. So for me, it's really interesting to just sit down and learn other types of architecture, for example, to structure things, to architecture, to architect yeah. the project, to change things and stuff like that. So just focus on these kind of things. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you because we talked about dedication and how you should not give up. Um, how do you manage to stay motivated when three stories you get bored or something isn't working out? So how can you stay motivated and how can other people stay motivated? Mm -hmm. So are they just talking to someone who's doing it or are you reading something? Are you watching something? I'm just thinking, you know. Hmm, that's interesting. Do you have some tricks? So, for example, I can say how I stay motivated about um, learning new things. And uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, something that I've been doing for a long time now, like years. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, go and I speak on meetups. And I always like choose topics that I haven't done before or they're a little bit different than mm -hmm. what i've used to do before something new yeah well yeah something new and um there are definitely periods where i'm really like so lazy and i don't want to do anything but just like when i start uh, scheduling things like this i have to sit down mm -hmm. on my ass and start working because otherwise things won't be very good for me right so mm -hmm. yeah. i kind of like push myself to do it a little bit but after mm -hmm. that it's super useful uh i mean i feel super happy that i did it so yeah, yeah. i think that um knowledge knowledge sharing is one of the things that everybody should be doing trying mm -hmm. to like even with maybe with blog posts blog posts or just necessarily a talk or a youtube video yeah yeah and just going on to meetups is really cool as well because you meet a lot of people who are very um mm -hmm. how should i say feeling enthusiastic or just like feeling that they want yeah. to do something and they're you, inspiring you share yeah. Some common interests. yeah yeah so i think that these mm -hmm. are things that keep you awake because yeah. there are a lot of like developers that are just um, going on their job and just going home after that and like they don't go on meetups mm -hmm. and stuff like that and they're kind of like when you talk to them and they're kind of i don't know they, yeah. they just don't care like it's just their job mm -hmm. they just want to go there they just want to do whatever and they don't have any interested interests uh, outside of their job about programming and i don't know mm -hmm. i kind of don't yeah. like that i don't know not for you okay so um we talked about your early years and what's interesting is that I study in the same university that you have graduated and you're currently teaching in, but I have a different major, so I'm studying software engineering. Mm -hmm. So if you can go back in time, what, would, what advice would you give yourself? I'm <clears throat> second year, so what advice would you give me now and yourself back then? Ah, <sighs> to go back to my... Hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, start... Or, or uh, in general for for young, young people who are maybe confused or they're just studying in university because uh, they have to. I have many colleagues <coughs> uh, that are just in university because of the university, because they want to graduate it and because they want the diploma. So um, they are not... It is they're not so interested <laughs> they want to work in this field so they want to be developers that's something that inspires them it's not like they're bored or something it's just that they don't appreciate the time in university that they have and the courses that they take so oh, I think it's that really this hard <laughs> with most yeah this is with most people for most people true as well so, so what do you think about this it's really funny because um, like I've seen students who are really so into graduating the university mm -hmm. yeah. that they kind of like forget why they're there. So you're in university, mm -hmm. so you can 
learn something that will be uh, useful for you or it will be like a base for you for your life ahead right mm -hmm. and i've seen people who graduate and then they sit down and they're like okay what should i do now and they don't do anything what should they learn yeah now? no 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 what should i do now i don't know what to do from mm -hmm. now on because they had mm -hmm. the university you have this program everything is scheduled and you ha kind of like know your path right but after you graduate mm -hmm. and you're kind of like feeling lost again and you don't know what to do yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people yeah a lot of people actually who don't graduate are doing even better than the people who graduated and most of the people yeah, like people. yeah and most of the people in sofia or like the faculty of mathematics and informatics that didn't graduate they don't graduate just because they they find what they're passionate about and they just like okay i don't have time to like uh, do no. the other things no. even even though this is bad uh, for me, like, because I really had a really, like, bad experience with my education from school to university. I have a lot mm -hmm. of, like, thoughts about it. Uh, I really, I think, I really think that things inside university uh, or, like, the faculty of mathematics and informatics needs to, need to change just because, like, the... How should I say agree. the 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 different subjects, even though they're connected with each other, they're totally disconnected in the terms of like studying. So you're studying different things, but you're kind of they're kind of isolated. So you cannot connect them mm -hmm. when you have to connect them. You can connect them after like you graduate from university and start working somewhere, like doing more complex mm -hmm. things. But it's really like going to be really wonderful if they can somehow connect the individual courses together so you can actually understand mm -hmm. why they're useful. I mean, right yeah, there. Yeah, why we study all these well, mathematics. Yeah. Exactly, because while you're for studying me now, everything. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, so... Why, why do I need geometry? I mean, I want to be a developer. That doesn't make any sense to me right now. Yeah, but... But I have read and I have heard many people explain why, but not my teachers so not the professors yeah yeah exactly so these are things that they they just need to change these are problems for our it, mm. like general problems for our educational system and um uh, what was the question <laughs> I, I forgot the question <laughs> what advice the first one was what advice would you give these young people what advice would you give me and what advice would you give yourself back then so if you could go back in time and talk to you to yourself yeah what would you tell yourself? Well, actually, this is one of the reasons I, I teach in Sofia University, so I can like have connection with the students yeah. and I can kind of like exactly. show them that what we are doing is really cool, so they can like uh, mm -hmm. get passionate about it and just uh, start mm -hmm. developing. Uh, but I really think that uh, if I have to give an advice to someone, probably this is going to be uh, to start trying to teach other people as soon as they can. Because this will really mm -hmm. make you a much better developer or whatever you want to be. So just mm -hmm. sharing knowledge uh, is mm -hmm. really amazing. And this, this is one of the things that really pushed me forward a lot from what I was before, like from the developer that I was before. Just mm -hmm. being a part, be a part of the community, be a part of everybody in the world who is doing this thing that you like doing. And mm -hmm. this will just make you much, much better. Yeah. And how can we be part of the community? I mean, worldwide, how can we connect with developers, for instance, in the United States? Or, they, for instance, if we can't go to a meetup or... Is there some other way? Uh, well, after all, we are kind of uh, living uh, in the internet. So there, are, like, mm -hmm. you can connect with other developers via Stack Overflow, for example. I think that this is really cool if you have time to just sit down and try to solve issues for other people on Stack other Overflow. Problem, yeah. yeah, and just communicate and like try to figure out better ways and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. 
there there are like ways if you really want to for example there are, for example podcasts or just video casts or whatever you can for example mm. try to participate in some if you like mm. want to show people um i don't know even like i i it's really hard for me to just um say it because mm. i haven't um went this way right i mean i've mm-hmm. i had another path that i took to get here where yeah. i am so, so. so everyone should find their own i guess just get inspired mm-hmm. watch like yeah. try to attend conferences like watch conferences online on youtube you can find a lot of conferences that like really cool people talk and show you cool mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. try to be like them try to reach them try to talk to them uh for example twitter mm-hmm. is really awesome even we if even if we don't use it in bulgaria a lot uh, a lot of people, uh, for example, in the States and in the East, they use it. And, for example, mm-hmm. they share really cool topics. Uh, there are a lot of cool discussions going on. So mm-hmm. if you want to like get connected to the global community, there, there are ways. Uh, mm-hmm. Even, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, if you are interested, you can just like sit down and organize some kind of a workshop. I don't know. Just so many ways. Mm. So many you can, ways. You can find people nearby that are doing the same thing as you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can. You might as well find new friends. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like the the people that you're surrounded with is uh, very important. Like they they make they 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 help you. They they kind kind of like mm-hmm. push you forward. For example, if you're surrounded with people who are not doing anything, it's going to be really hard for you to. Uh, be inspired to yeah, so continue and to move forward yeah, right so you should mm-hmm. like have this like even even if they're not friends but just like people that you're close to who are for example really good at something or just good at what you mm-hmm. uh think it's cool uh, they're going to be yeah. pushing you forward to for example they're, they're going to be inspired, kind of like yeah. mentors for you yeah yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i think that this is a, a good thing to have as well mm-hmm. Okay, um, we talked about university and young people, but what can you say to someone that's, for instance, in their 30s and is in a completely different field, so nothing that has to do with IT, but has stumbled upon programming and that's something that sparked an interest in, in them. So what should these people do? Uh, well, You have a 95 jobs, so you can't go to a regular university, mm-hmm. but you're passionate about programming, so what do you do? Well, if you are really passionate about something, you always find time to study it and do it. So mm-hmm. I think that um, being like being a developer is a really, how should I say, um, very generic because they're are really a lot of developers. It really depends on what yeah. you want to be doing. For example, uh, if you want to become like a front-end developer, I don't think that it really mm-hmm. depends on what kind of projects uh, you work on, but probably this is going to be uh, an easy job uh, just because mm-hmm. there are a lot of um, projects uh, that you can work on and you know yeah. uh it's not very hard for example creating like some kind of a form creating validations for it and just hooking it yeah. up, ho- hooking up to the project and stuff like that so these are things that are they don't um uh require for you to have like some mathematical background right yeah, uh, or a master's degree yeah, in informatics. yeah you don't have to be like a rocket scientist to do it but for example if you want mm. to go work on for example writing software for rockets then you know you cannot just yeah. like uh, go there without knowing rocket science so um mm-hmm. there are different mm. fields of development and i think that for people who are um older um they just, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not possible, of course, if they f- they start investing all of their time and just um, mm. working on what they want to achieve. They might even go and work on rockets. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but I think that most of people need to be r- realistic about uh, what is possible and what's not. I mean, you just need yeah. to be very sure if you really want this and how much you're willing to invest 
for it. And you need to also know what are the risks, because if you decide that you're going to be investing at a certain point, you will have to quit your current job and then mm -hmm. there, there's going to be uncertainty. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is the way we actually started our podcast with the challenges and with the taking risks. So, well, at a certain yeah. point, you always have to be okay. I'm going to do this. Whatever happens, happens. You know, if you're uh, mm -hmm. if you're healthy, that's all that matters. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you're healthy, then even if something bad happens, then you can work and you can fix it. Yeah, so, yeah, and especially here yeah. because we're living in Bulgaria and it's not, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's harder in other countries because, for example, if you're in the States, uh, you know, with the, the their whole different way of living with, uh, because you have to live on credit there, mm -hmm. uh, it, it really yeah. can get bad. But here in Bulgaria, it's mm -hmm. really easy to be able to switch from one field to the other. At least I think so, because you have your family, things are not so cheap, life is not so fast, so it's easier, yeah. yeah. But definitely okay, they should so not, if they decide, they should not quit. I think it's like mm -hmm. quitting after you started, after you invested a lot of time, is just the most stupid thing that people can do, because you lost, okay. you wasted your time, pretty much, like, mm -hmm. and I think that you should be minimizing the waste of time. It's not, yeah, it's just, it's just stupid to waste time. Yeah, we also talked about this as well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want to know how you see yourself in five years or in ten years. <laughs> this sounds like a job, like a job interview <laughs> question. So, what can you tell you, what can you tell us, why are you interested in this position? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so how do I see myself? I don't know. So do, do you do you think about the future? Because some people don't think that much um, further. For instance, they are just okay. I'm seeing like myself like this next year, and I'm not thinking about the year after that because you know they're just living more short term or they're more. Um, yeah, I understand. Concentrated on now, so. So my goals are to be developing my company and to uh, try to give. Uh, how should I say? Try to maybe like um, acquire new people to join my company, not to acquire, mm -hmm. just to. I don't know. Want? I really don't want to be a, to be searching for people to work with me. I really want to be able for yeah. people to want to work with me and for like my team currently uh, they're all like this i never like uh, i never went to search for people and i really yeah, want they, to, they just came to yeah i really want to give uh, them a better um how should i say better environment for working to f to mm -hmm. make them happy happier yeah. and more happy than they are now so i really want to work yeah. on this like just uh, building my company and just having new projects and new challenges this is this mm -hmm. is something that i really yeah. want uh and i don't know i mean after five years i'm i see myself just probably doing the same things that i'm doing now just trying to yeah, teach people better. yeah trying to teach people trying to I don't know, help the community, give to the community, just, mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. who knows? I mean, life is changing so fast, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I cannot... Mm, we never know. Mm, you never know what's going to happen. Okay, so do you want to share something else with our listeners? Mm. Or we can say goodbye? I don't know what to mm -hmm. share. I mean, uh, I think that we discussed a lot of topics, so... I mean, if you still have another question, I can try to answer, but <laughs> for me, it's kind of like okay. hard to figure out so, something. Actually, I, I'm listening to a podcast. Um, there are so many episodes and uh, the interviewer always asks, what's your favorite book? So do you have a favorite book on uh, programming? So something that someone who's interested can go find and read? Uh, yeah, well, these are just the... the I, I cannot say like that I have like a favorite book. 
I have to I have to see how them. there there are a lot of interesting books actually, uh, but I cannot like think of a name right now is. Uh, but do you, would you recommend I, uh, people to read books about programming? Is it something that's helpful? Yeah, definitely, definitely. They should, uh, for example, uh, read uh, Clean Code, Clean Architecture. They should read uh, uh, Enterprise, uh, what was it? Enter Enterprise Systems Architecture, I think. This, these are like interesting books. Yeah, one thing that mm -hmm. I can say is like for developers, at least I think that it's much better uh, to invest in things that are, uh, how should I say, common than investing time in learning different technologies. For example, if you're a good developer, you know how, for example, to structure your code and how to uh, structure the application and how to design it good. This will be yeah. helpful for you, no matter if you're writing JavaScript or you're writing C Sharp or whatever. Yeah, there are different languages, but still, I mean, this knowledge can be reused no matter where. So yeah. I think that yeah, no yeah I think that this is something that it's uh, useful for people just to focus on things that they can reuse. Yeah. Like yeah. it's obvious, right? If you can reuse it. It's going to be much more helpful than just uh, knowing yeah, every maybe. like library, every JavaScript Detail. library that is out there, you know. Yeah. But for for example, I think reading, they people like should definitely start um, reading source code from GitHub, from the libraries that you use. Mm -hmm. Just this is some some kind of like a book, you know. You just sit down and try to understand what yeah. the author wanted to do. It's super interesting and it's super helpful because you can actually see the patterns that they used and you can like mm -hmm. start using them yourself. It's super yeah. interesting yeah. and it's just like knowledge sharing. They, they're just sharing their knowledge of how to mm -hmm. write this thing. It's just amazing. So mm -hmm. GitHub is the best book okay. that I can recommend. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thank you very much. So, uh, I don't have any further questions. If you have any further answers, uh, I'll be happy to hear them. Mm. And, um, okay, you don't have any? Mm, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I think that I said enough. <laughs> Hopefully people were not okay. going to get bored. Maybe, maybe in another maybe in another. Episode. Sure, sure. It was a pleasure actually being okay. on uh, the podcast yeah. and hopefully people were going to, I don't know, like what I have to say. And uh, yeah, if uh, somebody wants to, for example, um, do like a talk, I mean, I'm the co-organizer mm -hmm. of Angular Sofia. So if there are people who like Angular and want to just talk about Angular, they're welcome to join. We haven't did we haven't uh, right. done an event lately, but we're all very busy. So, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, if there if where can people find you if someone wants to contact you? I don't know. They can find me on Facebook. I I don't it's I don't use it as it's meant. Uh, just Facebook yeah, is kind okay. of like I I, I add a lot of people. But uh, yeah, they can find me on Facebook, on GitHub, or just Twitter as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if someone's okay, interested, so you can contact yeah. me. Yeah. Okay, great. So I think that that's it for today. Thanks uh, to Ilya for joining us, and thank you for joining us. And I will see you next time. Thank Bye. you very much, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>